How you doing? This is Ride One Up Prodigy, the XR model, ready to commute. I'm going to show you how this thing is, how it works, if it's right for you. And I promise to give you at least two things that most other reviewers aren't going to tell you. So stay tuned. Let's check this thing out. color is chameleon. It looks green from this angle. Sometimes it looks purple. Sometimes it looks blue. Any way it looks, it looks slick as hell <laughs> to me. A um, couple water bottle holder attachments. You can see I have a water bottle on here. I bought this bike. A really fun, fun bike to ride. I'm going to show you some of how this thing performs and uh, show you a couple details in here in close. Got a nine speed drivetrain here with Shimano Olivio. Shit's nice. Um, Right here, this is actually your gear sensor. So this momentarily cuts power to the motor while you're shifting to minimize wear on your drivetrain with a mid-drive like this one, which is a bros mid-drive. You have the potential for a little extra wear and tear on your drivetrain. I like how they wrap the wires behind the chainstay here and you have a chainstay protector. Maxxis, Max Shield 27.5 inch tires just a real beast of a tire that feels like it has a really good flat protection layer and rides really nice and smooth and quiet. You'll see a couple places on this frame, uh, some pretty you know, small clearances between wires and fenders and such and tires, but it doesn't seem to present an issue because this bike is pretty damn dialed in. The battery is here in the down tube. This is a 36 volt system. The Bros is actually a 250 watt rated motor with 90 or 95 newton meters of torque. So you got kind of lower wattage, but high torque. Performs quite well as we'll show. One of the only things you have to do for assembly on this bike is put on these front fenders. There's a nice video on Ride One Up's website that shows you how to do that. Um, it's a little easier if you do this before you put on the tire. We got actually quite good integrated light here. Um, see the side cut out so you get some side visibility on that front light. And you have the integrated light here on the rear rack that also gives you that side visibility. Um, that being said, this doesn't have brake, brake light functionality. Nice paneer rail here, um, though you don't really have a hook for securing the bottom of your paneer, uh, but some paneers will probably hook around that crossbar there just fine. On this side you got those absolutely massive 180 millimeter disc brake rotors with Textro hydraulic disc brakes. So it's a hydraulic system has really good feel, though it takes a little fine tuning. On some of these bikes, even though this is not necessarily a budget bike at about $2,300, some of the rotor parts, you might benefit down the road by upgrading your rotor and your, probably your brakes will actually work a little bit better because of that. Charge ports up there, really nice style of charge port that's pretty much, you know, idiot proof. And it does go in there really positively. Battery drops out of the bottom. Uh, you unlock it here, it kind of drops out, and then there's another button on the bottom of this, and I'll actually show how that works in a separate little insert. There's that Bro's mid-drive. You got some decent platform pedals. I haven't even found the need to change them at this point. Um, they seem to work pretty well. Rear mounted kickstand there, um, you know, it's good to have it out of the way, so there really wouldn't be a way to have a center kickstand with this mid-drive motor on here. Second set of water bottle brazon points that I'm not using. You could put anything you wanted on there, different locks, another water bottle, what have you. Got some nice integrated wiring. You do have a little bit of a mess going on up here, but it's not too bad. And uh, you can see here, this is rated as a class three e-bike. So you don't have throttle, which that's the only way it can be class three and not, with no throttle and you have assisted speeds up to 28 miles per hour, even with this 250 watt system. You can get there, though it takes some effort like I'll show. Just another couple little pieces for information, that's your speed sensor. With the mid-drive, you need something back here to tell the motor and the sensor how fast you're going. So you always have to have a speed sensor on a mid-drive because they can't monitor your speed in the motor like a hub drive can. Another look at the, the rear disc brake there and, and the, just the really pretty color. The only thing I'd point out from the color perspective is I noticed that as you approach the head tube here, in a couple spots, there isn't very much of the gloss finish. So it kind of becomes a little more matte up here. And there are a few places where 
the welds are generally pretty damn good, but there are a couple places where they're, you know, not as great. So that's kind of my look around the bike. Um, you know, if there's something I didn't show or you have questions about, leave a comment down below. And while you're doing that, like and subscribe. It helps me out. Let's just get out and get the wind in our hair. Or, you know, my receding hair. So you can see, even though you can't use a throttle, just getting up into boost mode and do just fine going up a hill. I'm gonna scroll through the assist modes for you. Eco is very gentle. Now, one thing with the mid drive you have to remember is your speed is not just dictated by your assist mode, it's also dictated by your gear. So I'm in six gear, so kind of in the middle of the drivetrain. Um, I find myself riding in either sport, which I'm right now, and I'm not putting in very much effort. So you can get a lot of range if you want by just kind of just spinning your legs. You don't have to push. It's really to get that last few miles per hour out of this thing where you really have to push. I tend to use, like I said, sport and boost. And boost, I go up to boost. It's very simple. There's a little toggle here on the bottom. Go into boost mode for these hills because then I don't really have to change my pedal effort. And that's really the only time you hear this motor when you're in a little bit of assist like that. The motor is still very quiet. Um, and even though it's 250 watts, which, you know, a lot of people might be turned off by that, but the amount of torque, it comes in, it feels stronger than it is. So I wouldn't sweat that if you're concerned about the wattage. Now, things you need to know, this is a torque sensor, so you need to pedal. And if you're trying to get maintain about 20 miles per hour, that's going to take a significant amount of effort. And so you need to know that. There is also no suspension on this bike. So I add my suspension seat post, put on these little more ergonomic grips. I might also consider trying one of those suspension stems. So the ride, the stock seat is quite nice. Probably one of the best stock seats I've seen on a bike. Uh, that with a suspension seat post would be fantastic. It is a little bit of a firm ride if you don't have anything except just the stock configuration. On smooth payment, not much of a problem, but once you get into something a little more bumpy, you start to notice that. So I have a little bit of an empty stretch of path here, and I'm just gonna show you how quickly this can respond. So I'm just cruising along, I'm in boost mode, highest gear, I am just, I'm really just spinning my legs. You can tell I don't have any, I'm not breathing hard or anything like that. And I'm maintaining, according to display, about 17 miles per hour. Everything's clear, I'm just gonna push a little bit. Because this is torque based, when you do that, it, it kicks in right away. So I can hit 28 miles per hour by this display, actually a little bit over, but I, the effort, you do have to put out quite a lot of effort. A moderate amount of effort, you can really maintain around 21 miles per hour without too much problem at all. The bike path I'm on now, the speed limit is 15, so I'm gonna settle back in. And this is going to be the fourth range test I've done on this bike. Electron Surfer, you get lots of riding, lots of real data. That being said, you are not gonna see performance data on this except for that kind of modified hill climb because of no throttle. I'm also not gonna do braking testing you got 180 millimeter rotors, a light around advertised 50 pound bike without the rack and fenders. All that being said, it stops. Here, I'll just show you. I mean, how fast do you want to stop? With these tires and everything, it's, it does a great job. So like I said, the things you need to know if you're looking at this bike, you have no throttle, no option for a throttle. That can be easily countered for by shifting down and shifting into boost mode when you're gonna cross busy streets. If you're somebody who really wants a comfort of suspension, you have the XC model, which gives you a hardtail. Um, if you're a little shorter rider, you have the 
ST model, the step through. Uh, all share the same motor, just a little different variations on how they're gonna fit you. Display is small, but pretty dang visible. You have that battery indication on the side. There's two buttons here on the bottom that give you through your different parameters. A long hold gets into your settings menu. You mostly use the up and down uh, assist level to navigate around. There is a, on the bottom a walk mode button you hold down and then you have to push this button here to enable walk mode, though that didn't seem like it liked it that time. Um, there is also one press here to the right and that turns on your lights. You can also set that in auto mode so this little sensor here will pick up and turn on your lights automatically. I like to be able to turn them off and on myself. I like that it's one button, not holding down another button to do so. All right, so climbing a hill like this, I just do to go into boost. You don't even need to push very hard. You can just cruise right up it. On your left. Morning. So that lady had a Bosch uh, mid-drive on her, her trike. This is really a very quality feeling bike. You know, they didn't really skimp on anything. You could argue that maybe you'd want a suspension fork on all the models in this with having this aluminum frame and aluminum fork. You have a little bit of a, a rough ride out of the box. Uh, but that's pretty minor. It helps keep the weight down, so there's a really a trade-off right there. But, you know, the bros says when you turn on natural riding, it, it really is. Like, it just responds immediately to your pedal pressure. The minimum side is set up really nicely, so you don't have to push too hard if you don't want to. It's just a, it's a really fun bike. It's, you know, range, it's got a lot of range, but 36 volts, 13 amp hours. I'm hoping that memory serves correctly. You know, this is only using something like 10 watt hours per mile. You know, with a bike like this, it's pretty much ready to be like a car replacement out of the box. All weather, it just can really do it all. And a couple just small upgrades can just take it, make it feel a lot nicer and you'll just ride it more. Ride more, save money, be healthier, and pedal. It's an e-bike, not an e-motorcycle. They're made to pedal. And this torque sensing style without a throttle makes you do that. The Ride Went Up Pop Prodigy is really on par with bikes that are more expensive than it. It doesn't really cut corners anywhere that I can see. Maybe the grips, a new set of grips are not expensive. Everything else is pretty spot on and it just, it's a good riding bike. It's nice and stable. It's just a solid, solid setup. Hopefully this video helps you understand what it can and can't do and its limitations and strong suits. So the Prodigy XR has been a lot of fun. The only thing I wish it had that it doesn't have, and these are pretty minor things to me, um, I wish all the options were available with a suspension fork. And really that's the only thing. I did put a suspension seat post, but I already had one of those on hand. And that really helps out a lot, but it would help even more if you had something to take a little bit of buzz out of the road um, through your shoulders. Uh, even though you have a pretty fat tire down here, you still do get some of that road noise transmitted to your body, mostly because it's uh, an all aluminum frame, right? You have any questions, comments, bitches, complaints, let me know. Please share, it helps everybody out and that's really what I wanna do, help you out. And if I've done that, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.